But there's a tribe in Mali who know of it, and they are the Dogon tribe. You see, and they're not called the Dogon tribe for nothing. Dog, dog, is the dog star Sirius. And they know about its 49.9 yearly orbit around its sister star Sirius A, which is also our sister star, and they know about it. Now, without being able to see that, how are they able to know that? Well, that sun, that star, is 300 times harder than diamond. And it is, revolve, it, it is rotating at 23 revolutions a minute. And it's a star weighing so much. It's, it's, a, it's a, 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 a white dwarf. That star... When it goes in between, uh, when it when it goes through the passage between our sun and Sirius A, causes the um, our Earth to slow down in its revolution one second, and then to speed up one second as it transits, as it passes in between the two stars. It's a dynamo, a magnetic dynamo of energy. It has direct. It's a, it's eight light years away, and yet it has a direct link to our Earth and solar system. It causes havoc on our, with our solar system. It is directly linked, and it's hurtling towards us rapidly. So more light is a-coming. Oh, yeah. Nassim Harriman made a chart with his, which is knowledge that our cells stand right in the middle of this entire universe. Yes, our sun is uh, eight degrees removed from source, and there are eight higher suns than our sun, eight octaves. And if you imagine that our sun is like an umbilical cord, we go through our sun, through our sun's consciousness to the higher consciousness. We go through the, the solar consciousness, then the galactic, then the universal, back to unity. Last visit by the Anunnaki was 3,600 years ago. They are now referred to as the Anunnaki of the Light. The Anunnaki is 3,600 more evolved since their last visit to Earth. Yeah. He met Danny. He met with Cardinal Baducci. No, I can't understand that one's not a question anyway. All right. Mm -hmm. Question. Question asked to me a while ago, this is Danny, how long does it take in years for Sirius to come past us? What is the orbit of Sirius and our sun around each other in years? Well, it's exactly 2000, uh, 24,000 years when corrected. Most figures are uh, 25,920 years for precession. That is the official processional calculation. 25,920 years, but... According to uh, Walter Russell, uh, Walter uh, Crutenden, in the book um, The Lost Star in Myth and Time, again, I'm trying to look for that, but I think I've um, put it up on the shelf. Uh, in there, he explains that um, precession is speeding up. You see, as Sirius hurtles towards us 12 miles a second, um, what happens is that we start to speed up in our binary orbit with Sirius. And so what happens is that it brings the rate of precession down and it levels out to about 24,000 years exactly. And uh, Sri Yukteswar, the, um, the Indian guru um, who wrote the book The Holy Science, I use that a lot in my presentations, he said it was 24,000 years. So, Sophia, so do you believe our sun's binary is serious? Yes, yes, I've um, used all of the... Um, I've used all of the science that uh, Walter Russell uses in his book. He has about uh, nine or ten facts which... Um, which point to Sirius being the uh, binary star with our solar system, but it's a star system. And um, certain stars in the Arian, in the Aries, Taurus and Gemini sector are always considered to be our home. 
You know, the Pleiades are in that lot. Uh, Procyon and uh, Alcyon are in that lot. And we've always been instructed by the uh, occultists that Procyon, the small dog, and Sirius, the big dog, and Alcyone in the Pleiades, they sort of form a triangle, you see. And um, they're, they're not... It's not the, the, the winter triangle. The winter triangle is Sirius and Betelgeuse in Orion uh, with Procyon. But that's the winter triangle. But if you add Alcyon instead of Betelgeuse, you'll, get a, you'll still get a triangle. And, and that is a very, very sacred um, area, which is where most of humanity has been seeded from that area. Uh, the Syrians come from there, Sirius. The Pleiadians come from there. Um, and there's a lot of uh, different ones. In fact, the Canaanites, when you think of the term Canaanite, what does Canaanite mean? You know, the Israelites were always warring against the Canaanites. Well, they're the Canines, the Syrians. The Syrians were up north. They're always fighting against the Canaanites, the Syrians. From Sirius, the dog star, Canaan. You see, you look at the, the root of the name of the race and you'll see where they come from. Assyria? Well, the Assyrians know where they come from, etc. Yeah, Sirius looks amazing in the middle of the night, but um, right now, when you look north, uh, you'll see Jupiter. And Jupiter outshines Sirius by about 10 to 1. Jupiter looks like a 100-storey building compared to a 10-storey building, Sirius. And Sirius is the brightest star in the sky. You have a look out tonight. If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, look southeast. If you're in the, northern, if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, look northeast. And you'll see the most beautiful collection of stars you will ever see. Starting with Jupiter in the north and going all the way to the east, you'll see that in a line, you'll see the Pleiades, the Hyades, you'll see Canis Major, Canis Menor, and you'll see Sirius, you'll see all Orion, you'll see all of Orion, the, the most beautiful stars in the sky. They are the most celebrated, the spring constellations. All the way to Gemini, the pillars of Hercules. From Aries to Gemini, there is great rejoicing in the stars. The stars are so happy. And look, I think... I think that Jupiter is in Pisces. Is there anyone in the chat that might be able to confirm that, please? Any astrologers who might be able to confirm what degrees Jupiter is in Pisces? Because there must be a reason why Jupiter is so jubilant and so bright. I think it must be for that reason that he is in Pisces, because Jupiter is, lives in Pisces. He rules the sign of Pisces, and he also rules the sign of uh, Sagittarius. So unless anyone is out there that can uh, confirm that for me, I'll do that. We're about to have a short break. I'll do another 10 minutes on the other side for, for anybody who has any, any questions or anything like that. And when I get back, we can perhaps discuss uh, whether Jupiter is in Pisces and finish off because I don't see many other questions left now in the chat. And David says about the, um, yep, the great year is between 24,000 and 26,000. Good. Jesus is the sun. What are the angels? Okay, the angels are the um, angels. If you switch that word around a bit, you'll get the word angle. And angles are the degrees of the zodiac. That's originally what they mean. That what angel means, angle. Because when you work out, um, you know, the, the certain angle of six degrees right ascension, that would have a particular force. Therefore, that would be an angel. See, every 360 degrees of the wheel has a different day, a different character, a different angel, a different angle. So, And they are messengers of the God. They bring certain energy, certain vibrations, certain something from the causal realms. Therefore, that's what an angel is. In Egyptian, the word angel is neter. Neter means a principle, a principle of the mind of God, for everything is God. What happens when the binary returns? 
Sounds like the time frame for poll shifts. Possibly, yes. Uh, in fact, right now the polls are moving. They are moving rapidly like never before in history, probably. We are going to have massive, massive earth changes soon, for the better. Uh, okay, now, David, uh, I'd like to prompt you uh, in a, in a minute minute or so if we can have some music then I'll come back after uh, probably three minutes and we'll do ten minutes after the break there I want to check um, Jupiter and see where he is what degrees Pisces because it's a very interesting sky we have Uranus in Aries Saturn in Libra and as I explained before that is very significant and Pluto is in Capricorn and he is dealing um, wrecking havoc with the the tenth 